Okay, this is section 7.7. 7. Students are almost done with chapter 7. Um, and 7.7 7 is kind of a culmination of everything that we've learned in chapter 7. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use sine, tangent, cosine. And we're going to learn inverse tangent, sine, and cosine. Or inverse tangent, inverse sine, inverse cosine. We're going to have all these tools, this kind of bag of tricks, to solve right triangles. And what solving a right triangle means is basically... You're just going to find everything you can about the right triangle. You're going to find all its sides, and you're going to find all its angles. Um, so you would just you just probably just write in there that you want to to solve, and you can write smaller than I can. But here, let's actually just zoom in here. Solve, uh, solve right triangles. Let's zoom back out. So we want to solve right triangles. Find all the sides, all the angles. Remember all your kind of, like I said, bag of tricks. You've got the Pythagorean theorem, you've got sine, cosine, tangent, and now you can learn inverse tangent, inverse sine, inverse cosine. We can do this, we need two things. We need either two side lengths, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third, um, or we need one side length and a measure of one acute angle. One side length and one acute angle. Okay, so that's what we need. Um, and I want to now. I want to talk just about inverse sine, inverse tangent, inverse cosine. Okay, um, so let's move this up here. And uh, real quick, this should be these negative ones right here, here, and here. This should be actually written as tan. Kind of almost raised to the negative one. We not we don't call it that. We call it inverse tangent. But it should look like that. Inverse tangent of x equals the measure of angle a. And that's what it should look like. Um, I, what I'm about to write, I would write over to the um, right-hand side of all this stuff right here. So I would write it kind of um, over in this area. I'm going to write below it because um, it gives me a little bit more space. Um, so here we go. Inverse tangent. Uh, inverse sine and inverse cosine. I'm going to start with a triangle, a right triangle, just like I normally would. Okay, so I've got a right triangle, and let's name it everyone's favorite triangle, A, B, and C. So I take right triangle A, B, C. Okay, let's say before we even kind of do anything, uh, let's say that we want to. Uh, let's find tangent of angle A first. So I take tangent of angle A. In fact, you know what? Sorry, I don't mean to confuse you. Let's let me just give you the inverse tangent sine and cosine first, and then we'll kind of talk about what it means. So the inverse tangent is written like this. If I want to use angle A, then the inverse tangent of BC over uh, over AC equals the measure of angle A. Okay. The inverse sine of BC over AB. So let's say I want to find the inverse tangent, inverse sine, inverse cosine. Okay. The inverse, I'm going to give you all the formulas and then we'll explain a little bit more what it means. The inverse tangent of the ratio of tangent. So I'm looking down here at angle A. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite over the adjacent legs, right, is going to be BC over AC. And that is going to equal the measure of angle A. All right. The inverse sine, you have these buttons on your calculator too. Uh, the inverse sine. Uh, that's going to be um, the opposite over the hypotenuse of BC over AB is the measure of angle A. And the inverse cosine of AC over AB is the measure of angle A. Okay, so this is the formulaic approach. You plug this stuff in, you'll get angle A every time. It always works. I think it's a little bit easier to think about it in a different way. Um, so this is kind of what the book says. I, this is kind of me giving you this information. It's good to have. Now I want to explain to you 
um, maybe a little bit more intuitive way, a little bit more uh, maybe algebraic way of thinking about the inverse um, trigonometric functions. Uh, I'm sorry, ratios, trigonometric ratios, trig ratios. Okay, so I'm going to erase this inverse tangent and all this junk, and I'm going to kind of start over here. So um, make sure you've written this down because now it's gone. Do, 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 do. Goodbye. Okay, let's erase all this junk. All right, now let's start over. Uh, not, not start over, but let's talk a little bit more about it. When is this going to come in handy? Okay, let's say I have, um, I've got, uh, let's see. I know that the tangent of A equals the opposite. I know it just erases over the adjacent. Okay, so this is BC over AC. Okay. Now, my problem here is, what happens if I know um, what happens if no um, BC over AC, AC? So I know this part, and I don't know the angle. So in this case, I'm trying to find the angle, right? Um, in fact, maybe BC and AC are both numbers, and I'm looking for that angle. We'll do some examples like that in a second. But what we can think about this is these inverse um, trig functions and trig ratios is kind of undoing tangent. So like inverse tangent undoes tangent. If we think about algebra, if I want to get A by itself, right? so I want to get A alone, angle A by itself, I can take the inverse tangent of both sides, and that'll leave me with just angle A. So let's uh, let's do that. I'm going to take the inverse tangent of the tangent of this side, and then I'm going to take the inverse tangent the negative one of this side. Sorry, it's a little bit sloppy, but I'm going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. On the left, the tangents cancel out, and I'm left with just A. Yeah, this would be actually the measure of angle A, but anyway, the measure of angle A. And then on the right, I've got the inverse tangent. I'm just going to write down what I've got, the inverse tangent of BC over AC. And you see how that matches up with your formula. And that's where those formulas come from. I think it's a little bit easier to think about it like this. I think it's a little bit more intuitive to think of it as undoing, as the inverse tangent undoes, um, or is the reverse uh, of uh, tangent. Um, so, two ways to think about it. I think this way is a little bit more intuitive. Let's do a couple examples. Okay, so we want to solve this triangle. Remember what solving right triangle means? We want to find all the sides, all the angles. So let's try and do that. For this chapter, like I, or this section, like I said, it's a culmination of everything we've learned in Chapter 7. So we're going to have to use all those um, tools that we've learned earlier on. Right now, in this example, I know one leg, and I know an angle. Okay, the first thing I think we should do is find this other angle. All right. um, so let's do that. If I know that this angle is 42 up here, then I must know that this angle A and B add up to 90. Uh, so this angle B must be 48 degrees. Okay, um, so I've found all the angles. Half the, uh, I've found half of what I need. Now I need to find all the sides, and there's tons of ways I could do this, okay? I'm going to use, um, uh, I guess we'll use tangent, it uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, I'm going to find, I want to find these last two sides. So let's use tangent, and let's use 42, this one that we were given here, okay? So I want to use tangent, I want to use 42. All right, so that's what I'm going to write down first. Tangent of 42. Okay, how am I going to use that tangent of 42? Well, tangent is opposite. This side is opposite. Well, that's CB. I don't know that. Over the adjacent. This is the adjacent. Okay, so that's going to be CB over 70. So this is back a couple sections. And now I just want to find CB. So I'm going to multiply 
both sides by 70. And that'll get CB by itself. On the left hand side, I have 70 times tan 42. Circle on equals CB. Punch that into your calculator, and you get that CB equals 63.0. Uh, Actually, it's pretty close. So 63.0, we'll call it. All right, so this side here is 63.0. And now to find this last side, this AB, I don't even need to uh, use any more trig functions or trig ratios or anything. I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just use our favorite friendly Pythagorean theorem. And I've got two legs, and AB is my hypotenuse. So 70 squared plus 63 squared equals AB squared. And then we solve that for AB. On the left-hand side, we get that this stuff um, it all adds up to 8,869. So 8869 8, equals AB squared. If we get AB by itself, we take the square root of both sides. And we're left with on the right, AB equals the square root of that number, 8869 is about 94.2. So AB is about 94.2. And I check, and I find all my uh, sides, yes, all my angles, yes, so I've solved this right triangle. So now you've seen how to solve a right triangle. You've learned the inverse trig uh, ratios, so you should be all set to handle the last two examples there. Um, give those a shot on your own. And then um, that'll be it for 7.7. .7. We'll go over some of this stuff tomorrow. You should come to class um, as usual with all your notes complete and at least have attempted the uh, examples that I haven't done for you. Um, so good luck on those examples, and uh, we'll see you in class. Okay, so in this first example, um, my instruction is to find angle A. So I want to know the measure of angle A. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so to find the measure of angle A, um, I need to look at what I know. So I'm looking at A. Okay, so I'm looking at angle A, and it looks like I know the side opposite and the side adjacent. As soon as I see opposite and adjacent, I should immediately be thinking tangent. Now the question might be, once I find out that it's tangent, um, tangent of what equals what? Well. Tangent of what? Well, that what there is always an angle. So it's going to be the tangent of A equals the opposite over the hype. I'm sorry, the opposite over the adjacent legs, which is all the way back to early on in, in section 7. Um, so the opposite is 15 divided by 20. Now, the problem we have here is I want to find this A. How do I get rid of this tangent thing over here? Well, thankfully, we just learned that I can take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the inverse tangent of this side. And let's see if I can zoom in here and take the inverse tangent of this side. Tan inverse tangent of this side. I'll zoom back out. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Okay, so um, take the inverse tangent of both sides. On the left, that kills these tangents. Those are gone. I'm left with just the measure of angle A. On the right, I have the inverse tangent of negative 1 is 15 times, I'm sorry, 15 over 20. And I can literally put that into my calculator, and it'll give me back a decimal. And you should get, uh, and make sure you try this on your calculator, you should get 36.9 degrees. If you get something that's really funky and is not 36.9, make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians, like we talked about earlier. So make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. And that's how we find the measure of angle A, using the inverse tangent. The next one is another inverse tangent um, problem, so I'll give you a hint on the next one to find angle A. You need to use the inverse tangent again. Um, so I'm gonna, I want you to try that one on your own when you come to class. Tomorrow I want you to have tried that and, uh, as usual, shown all your work. Um, so we'll go on to the next kind of set of examples. 
Okay, so in this example, once again, we want to find angle A. Okay, I'm actually going to rewrite this as sine A equals 0.87. Okay, now to find A, I want to get A by itself. To get rid of this sine, this kind of pesky uh, sine out here, to get A by itself, I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine of this side, that's going to kill the sines, right? And uh, the inverse sine of the right-hand side. On the left, I'll just have the measure of angle A. On the right, the inverse sine is point... I'm sorry, we're going to have the inverse sine... The inverse sine of 0.87. This is, once again, something you can plug into your calculator. And you should find that you get the measure of angle A. You simply plug it in your calculator is 60.4, and it's an angle, so it's in degrees. Okay? So, that one is probably the most straightforward um, type of problem we'll deal with, um, with inverse um, trig, ratio, trig ratios. So, uh, try the next one. Same deal. Come to class with that one done, and we'll go on to um, solving a couple triangles.